This is the new Nikon 100 to 400 super zoom telephoto native Z mount lens. And I decided it will be a good idea to test this lens while shooting with it on an open door helicopter ride over Hamburg. Okay, it's happening. We're going on a helicopter flight above Hamburg. I'm getting ready, two cameras leashed on me, double leash on the 12 mil and the 100 to 400 sitting on the other side. I'm gonna be juggling in between the two, but they're both connected hands-free. I'm not gonna even probably take the phone out. So yeah, um, wish me luck. Now would you look at these, a 100 grand Cineflex heli gyro system ain't got nothing on my smooth handheld operating skills. However smooth they look, it took some serious hyperlapse stabilizing knowledge in After Effects to make it look somewhat decent, because this is how it looked in real time straight from the camera. And soon, in the full Hamburg vlog, you'll be able to see the entire flight video, including the wide shots and my dangling legs. Now back to London. And now in this video back in London, I review it as an owner of the 500mm PF lens, which is absolutely superb, and see if it could be the versatile replacement for that one prime focal length for me. So join me on a short walk from Nine Elms slash Battersea Power Station to Westminster Bridge while shooting some photos, videos and a time lapse or two. And if you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Michael Thomas. I'm a London-based professional time-lapse architecture and a travel photographer. And these are the kind of videos you can watch on my channel, viewpoints, recommendation in London or wherever I travel, as well as videos about the equipment that I use. So because I often find myself shooting from far away distances in order to compress the skyline, squeeze all the skyscrapers into a frame, that's why a telephoto lens is always in my bag. Here I have to disclose that this lens has been loaned to me from the guys at Nikon UK, but Nikon doesn't get a say in me making this video. All opinions that I share about this lens are my own, and the reason I'm shooting with Nikon is I believe it's actually the perfect camera system for specifically shooting time lapses, while other cameras might be better at different things for time lapses, and that's particularly my niche that I focus on and try to excel at. It is the best system because of the features that it offers.
a fair few of telephoto lenses in my past. I've had 500 f4 primes. I've had third-party Tamrons 150 to 600. I've tried the Nikon 200 to 500. As well as just recently, I had the privilege to shoot with the 800 5.6, the largest, biggest prime telephoto lens that Nikon produces. So I've had exposure to really good ones and ones that didn't perform that well. This 100 to 400 is a versatile zoom from a very reasonable sort of wide angle-ish 100 all the way to 400 and it seems to keep the resolution throughout its range unlike some of the lenses that I tried and didn't quite enjoy the Nikon F-mount 200 to 500 I've once had a chance to try and I just wasn't impressed by its quality. Personally, I am now currently an owner of the 500PF lens, so it is like almost a standard to me to expect this now from native Z-mount lenses. And while 400 is a lot, sometimes I actually like shooting with even more. Hence the teleconverter of my choice for my 500PF is the two times teleconverter Mark III F-mount, so I can still mount variable ND adapters from F to Z that goes behind the lens. With this lens, I did ask Nikon for the two times teleconverter. Unfortunately, that one wasn't available at the moment. So the kind guys at Nikon still sent me the 1.4 teleconverter. For the past half an hour, I've been shooting with that 1.4 teleconverter on. To be honest, as nice as this 1.4 teleconverter is, I would probably never buy a 1.4 teleconverter because as a Z6 II user with 24 megapixels, if I wanted to zoom in closer, I would just get the Z7 or the Z9 ideally. So for this, however the sharpness is there and it doesn't lose you as much light as a two times teleconverter, I would actually just never buy it. I would wait to get my hands on the two times teleconverter and then see how really good it is because that's what I'm doing with my 500. I'm using the two times teleconverter to sometimes get 1000 millimeters. But I mean, seriously, it is sharp. I have zero complaints with it. It's just when buying a teleconverter, I would either go double or I can always crop in a little bit or shoot in the DX mode you know it won't give me as much multiplication but yeah I would either go double or nothing and as we've reached now Lambda Bridge with that epic view of Big Ben and London Eye let's talk about what this lens really is what its positives and what's a few of its negatives Let's start and get out of the one negative that pretty much all Z lenses have, and that is that for time lapses, in order to stop the apertures from moving, you have to unscrew the lens to set it at particular aperture. Positives, well, it is really sharp. Like, I am surprised for a zoom lens how sharp it is and how little vignetting there is, even at 400 millimeter. Some telephoto lenses that I've used in the past had like a sweet spot 
where uh, 150 to 600 would only be really good up to 450, and past that it would kind of get soft. This goes sharp all the way to 400. And there is a 77 millimeter thread in front, and I've put filters on it and shot time lapses with a filter in front, and I didn't see a drop in quality. But then again, I'm using high-end filters. In the past, where I was using low-end filters, at long telephoto lenses, screwing a filter in front of the camera was usually resulting in a loss of quality. Doesn't seem to be the case with this lens, not even when I put the 1.4 teleconverter on, which was really surprising. Price-wise, well, you know it's gonna be expensive. It is 2,800. Still cheaper than the 500 PF that's currently at 3,500. And it is a versatile lens. It is the same weight there and there are about few grams in and out, both under 1500 grams. But on the 500 PF, I have to add the FTZ, which makes it like just 100 grams more. So there's not much difference, not much saving that I would do if I got this lens, but I would get the versatility being able to zoom from 100 to 400. As a photographer, I have to ask myself, do I need the versatility? Do I work in a fast-paced environment like wildlife, portraits maybe, or sports photography? Well, I don't. I shoot time lapses, I shoot architecture, and the other lens that kind of covers that range for me is the 105 millimeter 1.4, which is an absolute beast. That lens on its own costs 2,000 pounds at the moment, and yet it's 1.4, so at night time, I can use it for even shooting slow motion, where with this lens at 100, at 4.5, I won't be able to do that. So is this lens actually for me? Final verdict on this lens. Am I gonna sell my 500 PF and get this one? I don't think so just yet. It is a phenomenal lens. I would love to keep it, but I have to return it to Nikon UK. But I have a 100 and I have a 500, which is more than this, and I use a two times teleconverter with my 500. And the other reason is that there is a lens that's gonna be even superior to this one on the Nikon Z lenses roadmap. A 200 to 600 is rumored to be released in the near future. And if it is as good as this one, that is the lens that I would really consider selling my 500 PF to upgrade to, because this one's only 100 to 400. You need to buy teleconverters, which are still fantastic. I don't know what the two time is like, but the 1.4, is bloody amazing, so sharp. There's no softness, no color fringing with it. It is superb. But if it can do this with this lens, with that 200 to 600, that will be an insane combo. And for that reason, I will be sadly returning this to Nikon UK, but I really enjoyed shooting with it, especially from that open door helicopter. The 100 to 400 came in so handy, even though I couldn't shoot that much at 400 because it was crazy shaky. I ended up shooting quite a lot at 100. All the VR stabilization inside the lens, together with the in-body stabilization, definitely proved helpful. So it is a lens worth the money. If you're looking for a super zoom that you haven't got one just yet, or a telephoto lens that you want to upgrade to, it's just not a replacement for my 500 PF or my 105 1.4 at this moment. for watching the video. Hopefully you enjoyed this unscientific review, but as I own other Nikon lenses, I was able to compare it by my visual side and by my quality standards to the other lenses of Nikon that I currently own. If you liked the video, leave it a like, comment your feedback on this video, and subscribe for more videos 
like this and other ones that solely focus actually on the viewpoints of London or places I travel to. There's actually a video coming from Hamburg, a full vlog of attending the Reboot Conference and all the experiences that we got to do there, as well as a video from Prague that I've been working on for quite a while from last summer about the best views in Prague. So stay tuned for that. And that's it for now. I'm gonna shoot some more stuff of Big Ben with that lens. See you later, guys.